In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Make me sound like you're here. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, welcome to everyone joining us for Mass at home as well. I'm offering this Mass for Timothy Cow. In today's Gospel, we hear the aftermath of Jesus' appearance on the road to Emmaus. Jesus again appears to his disciples and senses the fear rising in their hearts. For us, Jesus' presence and power of his resurrection dispels all fear. As we begin our celebration, we pause to recognise the presence of Jesus in our midst. Lord Jesus, your resurrection gift to your people is peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are present to those who need you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you open our minds to new understanding. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigning with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Last week we heard of the manner of life of the first Christians in response to their risen Lord. Today, St Peter is in missionary mood and filled with the confidence of the Holy Spirit. He is able to appeal to the Jewish crowd, who recently howled for the blood of Jesus, that they were mistaken and misled by their leaders in putting him to death. Now is not the time for further recrimination. Now is the time for repentance by all the people, for fulfilling the prophecy that the Christ would suffer. In the first decades of the Church, there was no sacrament of reconciliation as we know it. There was only baptism, and it was supposed that this sacrament of conversion was so great that none of the elect would ever sin again. This soon turned out not to be the case, as St John writes. He writes to stop us sinning, but God doesn't abandon the sinner. The sacrifice of Jesus continues to take our sins away, so long as we sincerely try to keep his commandments. Nor are his commandments just legal prescriptions. They're ways of coming to know God's truth and love, so that our love will come to perfection in him. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is God and this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus. The same Jesus you handed over, then disowned in the presence of Pilate. After Pilate had decided to release him, you were accused. 
you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what we were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold. When he, said, when he had said, through all his prophets, that his Christ would suffer, now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you release me, have mercy and hear me. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favours for, for those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up your light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. The second reading from the letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only yours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God loves, God's love comes to him in perfection. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, explain the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn within us as you talk to us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated and why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish which he, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, this is what I meant when I said while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms, has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
This week I'd like to tell you about a remarkable message I received, but first I need to tell you about its context. Recently the CDF, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in Rome, produced a document about whether gay relationships could be blessed in church. The language used by the document was hurtful to gay people, so in response, with permission, I shared on social media something that Archbishop Malcolm had included in our Ad Clarem, our clergy newsletter. In response to my post on Facebook, David Thompson wrote of his own experience of being a young gay Catholic, and it was a traumatic read. Having shared his story, I wanted to respond to David privately, and I'll begin by reading you what I wrote to David. Hi David, I'm John Hindley, the parish priest of Holy Name and St Philomena's in Fazakali. I saw your comment on my post and I just wanted to reach out and say I'm very sorry for all the hurt that has been caused to you. Hearing of your experience made me very sad and particularly as you say, when it was done in Jesus' name. I'm sorry that words seem so inadequate, but I hope you're able to know peace and happiness. And this is David's reply, which I'd like to share with you. Good morning, Father John, and thank you for reaching out with that beautiful message of love. Genuinely, thank you. I wrote that painful post not because I wanted sympathy, but because I read some of the other less understanding replies and because there are still too many people who use faith as an excuse for intolerance. But I believe only because of ignorance of the damage and hurt done. Few think to ask themselves what it might feel like to be the person who they reject so blindly and hatefully or what their blind rejection does to them and to their self-esteem. What it does to a person to be told, you are evil and we reject you utterly unless you change. And so I wanted to show words have consequences and those consequences can be deadly, not just to those who are gay, but to their families too. In all those years of struggling, I didn't just lose my faith, I also lost the love of my dad. We barely talked for 10 years after I came out because he struggled to reconcile my sexuality and his faith. It took his own brothers, priests themselves, telling him, God makes no mistakes, love your son for who he is, before we finally managed a reconciliation. But he is still plagued with guilt because of it. His pain over his past sins still hurts us both, no, mo no matter how much I tell him, the past is done, I love you now. But I do know that such hate and such hurt are not a part of what the man himself taught. And I may no longer believe in church or religion, but I do believe in goodness and humanity and the message of love and imminence that he and others have preached. So once again, thank you for manifesting that love and that message and reminding me that there are still truly good people of faith in the world. Truly, may your God bless you. During this season, when we remember Jesus' words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, what David wrote was a profound reminder about the need to be kind, about the need to be gentle, as Jesus was gentle and kind. David's words from someone who no longer shares our faith are a powerful reminder that we can experience God in the forgiveness of another person, in the lack of bitterness, in the understanding of those who wish him harm that Jesus himself showed on the cross. I'm very grateful to David for letting me share his message with you this morning, and I hope that like me, you'll pray for him, that he finds the healing and the happiness that he so richly deserves. We profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Celebrating the victory of the risen Christ, we bring our prayers and petitions before our Father in heaven. For the Church, that continuing to follow the footsteps of Christ, she may, be, she may ever grow in holiness and purity of heart. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted in their practice of faith, that the Comforter may bring, that, bring them strength of conviction and their example may inspire us to be ever more faithful. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for our young people, that open to the call of God, they may strive to do his will and seek holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, may they receive the gift of your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear for the lately departed, that they may rest in the sleep of peace and rise in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear in a moment of silence, we bring our own petitions to the Lord. We remember particularly those who have died, Nikki Jenkins, whose requiem is tomorrow, and also Prince Philip, and also those mourning them, particularly the Queen at this particularly sad time for her. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Father in heaven, at Easter your only begotten Son destroyed the shackles of death and sin. Pour out your saving grace upon us that we may let go of former ways and embrace the gift of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, 
when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philomena and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord. I've forgotten the words, isn't that bad? Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me for Mass this morning. Probably just as well. I'm having a couple of days off next week, but can't remember the dismissal. So um, the next Mass, for those of you at home, will be uploaded on Wednesday evening. Bye, God bless. Thank you.